Hello, everybody, and this is... I'm Aaron. I, ooh, I messed up my own intro, nailed that. I'm Aaron. This is Table Scraps. This is a show um, that uh, the Paper Dungeon puts on. That's who we are. Uh, that it's about the, the show that we run on Monday, except we run on Thursday. It's me. Just me today. Uh, no, no, no Drew to, to back me up. No, no Grant to just ruin the whole thing. Um, just me today. So, um, basically all that happens here is, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about what happened on, on this previous week's, uh, of session of Dunder the Dragons 5th edition that we have on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Um, we are wrapping up a three-year-long campaign by all technicality. Now, probably not, but by all technicality, this last episode could be the last episode of campaign one or book one as, as we'd like to call it here there's a there's a possibility that that's the case personally i think it's a pretty low possibility um before we get into it i do have a couple of obligatory plugs that i have to say also a a statement of this episode will probably be pretty short um seeing as it's just me today um and uh I don't have a whole lot to talk about. I'm going to be 100% honest. Plus, I'm really tired. So, uh, I will. Uh, this will probably not be like a two-hour thing. It'll probably be more like one, maybe. Honestly, if we hit 45 minutes, I'm going to be jazzed. Um, but anyway, plugs. Going to make them real short and sweet for you. First off, we have a website. www.thepaperdungeon.com On that website, we have a merch store. You should check it out. Buy some stuff, help support the stream. It's awesome. Get some cool stuff in return. Even awesome. Uh, two, we have a Discord. It's filled with cool people. Um, and they're people that are probably very similar to you because they like Dungeons and Dragons. They like uh, the Paper Dungeon. And frankly, there's probably something else about them that you like and they like. It's, 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 probably, it's probably a pretty safe bet. We've got some pretty rad people going on um, over there. So... Hop on over to the Discord, join up, it'll be sweet. Um, what else do I got going on? Shout out to the YouTube, shout out to the, to the uh, podcast listeners. Y'all are awesome. If you want to support us, uh, anyone can do this. Anyone can. The easiest way, bring your friends. We like people, and uh, you have people. So tell them about us, have them stop by, it would be great. Uh, if you want to support us monetarily, there's a couple of ways you could do that. Um, you could go to Streamlabs Donation. You could go to Ko-Fi. We have a Ko-Fi. Or you could go to our Patreon. Um, on our, our, our Patreon's pretty sweet. Um, we are pretty far behind on it, which really sucks. But I have faith and confidence that we will get it back up and running and we will get it awesome again uh where it's a fun place where you can get some extra content monthly from us uh that is just pretty sweet additionally as i mentioned we'll be ending uh, campaign three somewhat soon and once campaign two rolls around which give us a little bit of time on that one uh the patreon will be a very important place because uh i since i'm dming i have a little bit more sway over where the story actually goes because well, i'm the dm that's that's what i'm gonna do um and i would love to have some participation from the crowd uh when it comes through comes to patreon and stuff like that so there will probably be polls there will probably be like multiple choice things and suggestions that you guys can put in for character names places things um so make sure to stop on by especially once campaign two rolls around so that way you can you can participate with the group and that's awesome um there's probably a plug that i don't remember oh uh social medias that we don't really use tiktok instagram twitter check us out there they're pretty fun once again hopefully uh those are things that will start to do stuff again um because they're very important and i'm so bad at them um, but I'm really trying. There's a lot of things out there that I'm just not very good at, and yet here I am, just trying to slug my way through them. Um, Alright, so, 
to the story itself. What exactly happened last Monday night? Uh, some messed up stuff. It was all combat. Combat, start to finish, two hours. Uh, to sum it up, things went really bad, then really good, then really bad, then really good, and then really bad again. And then, like, really bad. Um, the whole group has been uh, dealing with this Clovar evil guy. In the process, we've kind of figured, like, well, we can't really hurt Clovar at the moment, but maybe we can take out his, his subordinates, his, like, generals, basically. One of those generals is a dragon named Rikorum. He's the king of the dragons. Not a good dragon. Bad, bad, evil, evil thing. And so our group's like, we should kill that dragon. Unfortunately, that dragon kind of beat us to the punch. Because instead of us tracking down them and, and going just whole ham surprise, like, haha, we're here to slay you. He shows up at our house and then does the same thing. That's where we started off this past Monday. He's at our house. He has two of his friends and they're there to just absolutely rule the place. And so things aren't looking good for our poor party of level 17 adventurers because there are two ancient dragons and a great worm staring us in the face. That's not a good time. That's pretty, pretty messed up. Uh, but things, that's the starting off bad. Things get a little bit better. Um, we cast some magic, we swing some weapons, we split off and go in all sorts of directions. Cather is once again plagued with the struggle of Cather being a paladin, so he has to be up close to hit things. And the enemies often have the ability to teleport. That makes life very difficult for paladins. Now, I hate teleportation when it's an ability. I hate it. I'm just going to go out there and say it. I can't stand it. It's like one of my least favorite things. Because there's just no interaction with it. It isn't like, like you can't respond to it in any way shape or form there is a single class in the game that has a reaction response to it and that's it i think it's dumb i think here's here's my here's my bold claim i think that teleporting should count as movement now it shouldn't take up your actual movement speed i'm still fine with you being able to like teleport and then run but anything that would trigger off of someone leaving your range should trigger with teleportation. That's it. That's that's the whole deal. Like that that should just be what it is. The the idea that someone who is focused around locking down an enemy couldn't stab someone as they were like teleporting that, I, I don't like that at all. Um, I have actually talked with, uh, with DJ about it when it comes to one of my spells, which is a Booming Blade. Uh, and Booming Blade is another one of those that it triggers when someone moves more than five feet. I'm like, hey, DJ. Can Booming Blade trigger on teleportation? And I set up my, set up my point and was very convincing, and he said, yes, absolutely it should. And I think that it should that should just be how it works for most things. Like, I'm fine if it gets around stuff, but for reactions and triggered effects from moving, obviously, if it's like, for every five feet of distance that you move through a thing, that doesn't count. Like, just use your brain. But you shouldn't be able to just escape any situation in the game by being able to teleport because you have an ability. Like, you can't counterspell it, can't do anything about it, and I think that sucks. Biotechnicality, by the rules that we've put out, teleportation isn't even affected by anti-magic field. That's wonk, dude. That's absolutely jacked up. I don't really understand the point of that at all. The, like, anti-magic field affects spells and magical items 
and like the effects of those magic items. But technically, it wouldn't affect character abilities. Which would also mean that teleportation wouldn't be affected. Ludicrous to me. That seems... It's another one of those, like, I don't know if Dungeons & Dragons really thought out the repercussions of these actions. Maybe, maybe we should look at this a little harder. And, I don't know, think for ourselves a little bit. So... That's my rant on creatures with teleportation abilities. But Cather's in trouble. He goes off to fight the one that can't teleport. We end up with uh, Kiamora, one of our NPCs and, and longtime friend of the party. Run off with Edward to deal with his own problems. And Abanthe is a wizard on a tower after he casts Time Stop and gets himself all prepped up and all gussied up and ready to fight and, and deal some DPS. And, uh, that's... The fight goes fine, honestly, for a little bit. Um, we managed to blitz down one of the dragons. Just absolutely laser it. I, like, two crits in one round. One of them from Abanthe, one of them from Cather. And we absolutely just delete this dragon after Kiamora comes in with the final blow. It's, it's anime. It's rad. It's cool. I think it was the Emerald Dragon that we brought down first. And then things start to get bad again. Uh, a couple of us get knocked down or similar. And the Red Dragon is messing Abanthe up. The Abanthe is my character. And so where we're fighting is Gambit's Keep, which is my guilty pleasure. I got to design Gambit's Keep, I got to figure out the defenses of Gambit's Keep, how many people we have there, how many, how many, like, weapons we have there, what's all going on, what are all the defenses of, the, of this place. And we have these ballistas and a catapult. And let me tell you, those little NPCs, I'm, I'm always, I'm always a sucker for, like, rooting for the little guy. Like, that's, oh yeah. Like, if there is a chance where this, like, normal person can go up and defeat someone, like, 30 times their weight, like, Little Mac. Love Little Mac. That idea of, like, I'm going to go fight Mike Tyson or the Sandman as, like, a 120-pound wet, like, fighter against, like, 300-pound, like, 6-foot-8 Sandman. Just because I'm faster and I counterpunch and I dodge and I duck and weave. I think that's so, so cool. I love stories like that. And so to see these little, like, 20 hit point guardsmen who are manning the ballista just miss a lot of shots. But the ones that they hit really mattered. And there was one round where two of those ballistas got crits and I almost wept. It was wild. And so in one of the rounds, the red dragon was taken out by the ballistas. And there was no greater joy. And so then, it's just down to us. It's uh, all of us, we're, we're damaged. We're not in a, in a great spot. And, and the, the final boss, the, well, of, of this fight... Rikorum, the uh, the elder the, the elder worm, the great worm, not the elder worm, completely different thing. And DJ whips out the secret weapon, uh, a telekinetic kinetic grasp. That, and you see what we what happens is we run into the problem with having an efficiently statted party that is not necessarily a cohesively statted party. Um, none of us are, like, really, really focused towards strength. The closest is Catherine and Kiyomura. They are very strong, but they're paladins, so, like, they're not going to be, like, oh, yes, I have a 22, or, like, I'm specifically incredible at, like, these strength saves. Like, it's, they're not a barbarian. Like, strength itself is pretty much, like, 
if you're not a barbarian, even if you're good at it, that's probably... There's probably some big limitations on what exactly you can do with strength. And so... And the telekinetic grasp was a strength saving throw. Not good. Uh, all of us fail. We needed like a 26 to hit to, to escape it or something like that. Abanthi gets knocked out. Cather is, is suspended. Edward's hanging on by a thread. Um... If things are not great for the party and then we just uh we just like can't get out of telekinetic grasp none of us are able to hit that 26 mark and uh there was a round where edward could have done something because we were only restrained and and we missed that uh and and so edward didn't perform actions on one of his turn basically in the last 30 minutes of this fight there were so many things that happened that if they we either had done something or had done something different or chose not to do something else like or rolled one higher we would have probably made it out of this fight okay and then we just didn't and we just couldn't quite manage to make our way there and it was rough it was it was hard to see uh i know i wish that drew was here right now because he was beating himself up for like a day after the episode happened um just really in his own head about like if i had chosen to do this if i hadn't dropped this spell kiyomura had a uh, bless cast on everyone to give a d4 and then both him and uh both kiyomura and kather rolled like one under the save uh but he had chosen to drop bless uh, like a round earlier in trade for a, a, a shield of faith and so like that could have been a game changer uh edward didn't have that round in there apathy rolled one too low when it came to the save as well uh and then had a round where he couldn't perform any actions and so it was just uh it was it was just rough it was just rough the whole time and then there was a big dragon breath attack and uh, we all got knocked down, and if we didn't get knocked down, then we got knocked down by the telekinetic grasp at the end of the end of the dragon's turn, and that was rough. Yeah, so currently, the party is all unconscious. We're all at zero HP, which means that by all technicality, this that could have been the last episode of the Paper Dungeon. Now, uh, well, of Campaign One of the Paper Dungeon, we're not actually going anywhere, but. I don't think that will be the case because there just isn't enough ceremony. We love ceremony out here. That's a big part of what we do, big part of who we are. We like big flashy things and decisions that are cool and interesting and tell a story and stuff like that. So I don't know how, but I think the party's going to make it out of this. And I don't think it's going to be because someone showed up and killed the dragon. There's a lot of possibilities. We talked a little bit about it. Um, the group did all together after the stream of like, if we get out of this, how do we get out of this? And there and there are quite a few things. We have a lot of allies, um, and there we have a lot of pre-planned things that are inside of the keep. And there's all like there's there's like a million and one things. It could be that we all go to our respective afterlives, and we like fight our way out of hell to like re-enter the mortal world and and reclaim our bodies and then go defeat Rikorum and stuff like that it could be that um the gods for once in their lives actually do something and help us out and maybe not like kill the dragon but uh protect us and send us to a different location um so that way we can we can wake up and survive there there's a there's a lot of different possibilities um so is is this really the last episode is this truly in the end i'm gonna say doubtful i i don't think that would be the case i'm pretty sure that we're gonna make it to the end of this game i'm pretty sure that we're gonna hit level 20. we're gonna have to be pretty careful um because this is probably our last chance to like get out of a total party kill situation 
like if it happens again that's probably the end just the end of campaign one so that's rough on the bright side we leveled up um i asked a dj as the stream was ending and then he, we managed to convince him that if we are alive then we should be at level 18 because we did kill two ancient dragons uh and almost killed we were like 250 damage off of killing rikorum which is like one to two rounds of combat like uh, if kather and kiyamura but like don't crit it's two rounds of combat probably because apathy can apathy can probably put out like a fair amount uh and then between the two paladins like we, we can manage we can do some stuff if they do crit like if if either avanthi uh, kather or kiyamura crit then it's probably one round of combat if we're able to fully move so it's oh hey hello heavyweight rpg thanks for the raid um uh this is table scraps it's a show where i talk about um uh the show that we run on mondays at 7 p.m cst um it, we played under the dragons fifth edition and right now i'm i'm talking about the last combat that we had that actually may have ended in a tpk and so it's it's pretty uh it was it was pretty messed up <laughs> And so, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the possibilities as for where the campaign is going next. This is a campaign that we've been running for, for like, uh, three years almost. And our character is a level 17. Um, the fight that we were in was with a, uh, it was with two ancient dragons and a, a, an elder great worm. And we managed to kill the two ancients and we're 250 points away uh, from killing the Great Worm too, But none of our characters are particularly good at strength, so we got caught in a uh, telekinetic grasp. And then we just kind of hung in midair as he, like, blasted us with force damage breath, and then we just kind of ragdolled into non-existence. And it was rough. It was rough. But there's hope. As I was saying, there's there, there's ways that we potentially get out of this. It'll absolutely, it'll absolutely be one of those like hail mary passes from the DM. That's like, shoot, we're level seventeen. They weren't supposed to die here. <laughs> um, could be some allies that show up and and either help us out of the situation. They probably can't kill the dragon, but like help us out, get us out of there. Um, our world has gods that are incredibly powerful and frustrate the living daylights out of me it's because they never do anything they're like the most useless gods in the world so maybe once for once in their sorry existence the gods will help out the people that they were literally like hey we don't want to ask you to like kill our enemies for us because like we should probably be the ones to do that but could you go kill our enemies for us and we were like okay Maybe for once they could do something. That would be pretty sweet. Sorry, I was a little, a little angry. Uh, but yeah, there's there's plenty of ways out of here. Let me ask you, um, if any of you have been in a in a Dungeons the Dragons game uh, and have experienced either a character death or a TPK, what is, are there any any ways that you guys have gotten out of it? Like. Have you had any any plans that were prepped beforehand? Have you had any any like hail mary passes from the DM or the players? That's like, hey, do you remember that NPC from like a year ago? That was like, in your time of need, I'll be there for you. Can you like show up? Like, do you have anything like that? Because I, I can think of probably a few. Uh, that. I mean, at least one has happened in the, yep, Divine Intervention. Like, so, my my issue is, so I, I normally DM. I, I've been in, I've DM'd for a long time. I've been playing this game for 12, 13 years. And most of those years have been, uh, <laughs> most of those years have I've been DMing. Um. 
I divine intervention is so funny because it's like wish but like more of a gimme and random so you just kind of like you're like help and then something happens I, I love divine intervention uh, my problem is as a DM I I have I have beef with gods all right I don't like him <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, get him out of here. Uh, like, I don't know what it is. I, for some reason, gods in my campaigns are always, they have to be interactable and therefore weaker than a lot of people have gods be. Uh, the DM that we currently have in our, in our group, the one that DMs, his name is DJ. He's the DM for the Paper Dungeon at the moment. Um... He's a big fan of the, like, all-powerful gazing over. Oh, that's so sick, uh, heavyweight RPG. I'm, I can talk more about that uh, in, a, in a second, because I, I love gods that are, like, killable. Love killing gods. That's, like, my favorite pastime. DJ loves gods that are, like, overseers, that have nigh unlimited power, that can wave a hand and wipe out landscapes and stuff like that. I hate that. I mean, I don't hate it. I understand it. I think that it's cool. But I want my character to potentially, like, like if I'm hitting, like, level 18 on a character, I want to, like, meet up with a god and they're, like, kind of concerned. Like, if they're, like, like, it would be a tough fight and there's a good chance that my character would lose, especially alone. But, like, a full party of 18th level characters, they meet a god. The god has to be, like, I'm gonna make sure that this meeting takes place behind, like, a wall. Where I, like, they can't get to me because that's gonna be a real pain and I might die. Um, speaking of which, uh, I have, so, as I, as I mentioned, we're approaching the end of, of the first campaign. Campaign 2 or book two, as we like to call it here at the Paper Dungeon, I'm going to be the one DMing, and I'm very excited for it. Now, the thing is, I don't want to leave the world where we are, because because that's kind of our namesake. DJ put a lot of work into that world. So I'm going to expand it. And I can't go too far, because I want to keep it a little bit secret. But there will absolutely be mortal gods in the game that I'm running. Uh, and I am... I'm very excited for it. There will even be the potential for the characters to, by all technicality, become either gods, demons, or devils. Depending on what's going on. I am so excited for, like, big fights between, like, divinity and mortality. It's, like, my favorite theme in the world. So... Expect some of that uh, if you ever decide to stop by on a Monday night in probably around a couple of months. Well, we have to finish off this one, and then we're probably we're gonna take a bit of a break, so that way we can uh, kind of get things back in order. We have to get new character art. We have to we have to do just loads of random stuff. Um. Uh, y you know, you know, you know how it is. Uh, but then once that's all prepped, we'll get back into the swing of it, and whew, things are gonna be popping off, and I'm excited for it. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, well, this is rough. I feel bad, because I, I, I was raided, and that's awesome, but I, I'm kind of out of things to talk about. It, I suppose I should ask. I mean, I'd like to do it anyway because this this show doesn't have to be about Dungeons the Dragons or even or, or the past episode. It can be pretty much about anything. Uh, is there, do you have any questions? Uh, is there anything you want to know about about me, about the group, about the party, um, about what we've been doing? Because uh, if not, I think I'm probably gonna call it a day, even though it's only been like 40 minutes. Because uh, your boy had a. 5 a.m. shift uh, and two hours of sleep before that. So I am I am ready for a nap. Uh, yes, we started at level one. Um, we actually started 
the before the campaign we had individual character one shots to lead us together as a group and then we all the group originally had uh one two three four five six six players and one dm uh over the over the years we've lost three players uh, which is which is a bummer, but frankly, I pers I personally like small parties, so it's sad because we lost some talented people and they were, and they were good, uh, and and there were of course like some problems here and there, and and it's a bummer to lose to lose talented people, but at the same time, now we have now we have three people, and who three exactly dangerous intimate adrenaline that's what we're here for uh, and i had a conversation with uh with dj and drew about small parties i love small parties they love big parties they're they're the type of, like dj is the type of person to run a group of like nine people because he's a lunatic and hates himself i don't understand how he does it i'm not about it give me a give me like three four people and i am set and I was like, why, why don't you like, th like, small parties? He's like, well, I like to fight, like, really big monsters. And it's really hard to fight really big monsters when you only have, like, three or four people. You are a lunatic. And I mean this in the most loving sense. Thirteen people for four sessions? What is, what, what, were three of the sessions one round of combat? That's ridiculous. That is crazy. Oh my goodness. I've like the biggest group I've ever DM for was like at most nine. And that was like accidental. Like I walked in and I was like, why is there nine why is there nine people here? Huh. But to choose to DM for thirteen people, super theater of the mind and anime style, I mean that's up my alley. <laughs> that that yeah, to do, to be fair, I think that there's only two ways to, to like, run a group of that size, and it's either super theater of the mind and, like, real loosey-goosey, or it's, like, militaristically rule-based, where you have, like, exact movements of characters, everything is gridded out, and, like people you have like 30 seconds to say what happens on your turn and that other than that those are the only like if you do if you like kind of just put half effort yep that chess timer honestly that's something that i would almost like to put in every game that i play like having a turn-based timer oh my goodness we'll we'll have some episodes even in, even in like the three like the three person party that we currently have uh drew drew plays a paladin and we love drew oh my goodness drew's turns will take like 20 minutes and all that he did is hit someone with a sword twice and some of it is him doing math like uh cather is is drew's character and Cather has the current stream record of most amount of damage dealt in one turn, where he hit, like, almost 400 or something like that, like 380. And so he has a lot of math to add up. I just don't think that he knows how to do it, like, efficiently. Because he'll be sitting there counting for, like, eight minutes, and I'm like, this this is basic addition, and I'm not very good at it. But this wouldn't take me eight minutes. Like, what are we what are we doing here? Uh, bless his heart. What like what a guy? What an absolute lad. Love him, but good lord, get a calculator. We need. We've joked about like getting him getting him a like a old fashioned ten key for his birthday. We ha he has to like crank. Oh my goodness. Yeah, barbarians are low intel. Yeah, uh huh. The, well, I mean, Cather is a himbo, without a doubt. He's like he's like a Batman himbo. He's edgy, and dumb and hot. And that's like the three things going for him. <laughs> so I suppose him being unable to add up to uh, up to like 
a hundred is pretty in character. But, uh, yeah. So sometimes, sometimes these turns go a little long. I, th I think that having a, having a rule-based system, uh, of, of, like, a timer for turns is honestly just a potentially good idea. Smite and Rage are relatable. So, I, this is my own personal opinion. Smite, a little too busted. It's like, it's like being a rogue for a limited number of times, except better. So it's like, it's like a less consistent, but just better rogue in a lot of ways. Where like, I have more hit points, I have a higher armor class, and when I hit you, I'm going to roll so many dice. But a paladin can do it like two to three times in a turn. So here's here's one of our big problems, heavyweight. So in our campaign, we have changed the crit a ruling, and I love it. At the same time, I also kind of hate it because the problem with critical hits in Dungeons and Dragons is that sometimes they're just incredibly unsatisfying, which which is lame. Like sometimes you'll you'll like hit with your great sword and you'll crit. And you're like, sweet, two D six doubled, and then you roll all ones and you still deal like six damage. And that sucks. That's garbage. We hate that. So what we've done is the crit rule that we have is when you hit and you crit, you total up the damage of the dice you would roll. So let's say, let's use a great sword again. Six and six, that would be 12. So you start with 12 and then you roll the dice on top of that. So even if you, even if you roll all ones, you're still dealing 14 damage off of just the initial number. But you have a chance to have like 24 damage, which means that you'll have some nasty crits like a paladin who crits is guaranteed to deal like a hundred some damage if they have like a fourth level spell slot like it is there will be some turns where like we'll be in a fight and things are going fine or badly and then like one natural 20 and you will absolutely just completely change the game plan just like, well, this we're now in a completely good situation. And yes. Yes, it does. It... Ow. <laughs> um, I play a wizard at the moment. I used to be playing a much tankier character. Uh, like, originally my character was a... Like, a full-on tank. I had, like, over 200 health by the time we hit level 10. It was, like, I was, a, I was a tanky, tanky guy. Now I'm playing a wizard, and I just now have 119 health. We're level 18 now. And, ow. It's, it's hard to survive out here when you have people, like, we, so the characters that we have and the player, like, Drew and I are very like powerful players double the dice you would normally roll great yep great sword is is 46 yep that's that's pretty standard um i i love it the feeling is great until they're like all ones but it's so hard to balance right it's so hard it's so hard to balance that when it's like i like they're i I don't even know. I feel like it should be... You can only do it if you have declared before you roll the dice, like, what your damage dice is going to be. I, I think that that... I don't... But that's, that's just hard to, like, remember. It's in the same vein of, like, having to say, like, this is non-lethal damage so that way you don't accidentally kill, like, an important informant. Um, but yeah, that there's, there's a, there's a lot of things out there for critting. 
And so we're going to have to figure out... I mean, we want it to be different. I feel like there should... Maybe there should be a... That would be interesting. What if... What if critical hits were, like, landing on free parking in Monopoly? Like, what if for every natural one, you add a number of dice into a pool? Like, they could be, like, D4s or something, or D6s. And then when you crit, you can, like, pull from the pool to... Oh my goodness, that would be sick! So, some of the things that we're planning for the future is we want ways for the chat to interact more with the stream itself. But we don't want the chat to actively be influencing the story because, like, DM is the one that's, like, trying to tell a story and, and stuff out there. So one of the ways that we want to do it is have, like, a, a, like a, a resource for the players to use that by, like, sending your uh, channel points and stuff like that and, and or like bits you can like fill up the bar and then use um oh that's interesting um but then you can use the die to like re-roll a roll or something like that and the dm can also use them to like grant players uh, to like re-roll one of their own rolls or something like that it would also be interesting if we did have that uh that pool of of dice so like uh the the like crit pool and so every time you roll a natural one it adds to the crit pool but then you could the chat could also add to the crit pool themselves so that way like there's a banked storage of dice where when you roll that natural 20 you can say okay we need to like kill this boss we've been holding off on the crit pool for such a long time using just little bits and pieces here but, like, we're in trouble. This is a life-saving crit. I'm going to add, like, 30d4 to this roll. That's that's actually kind of interesting. I, I feel like you could almost do that even in, like, a, in a home game. I'm going to have to try that out. Like, just every time someone rolls a nat 1, you put, like, a token into, like, a dish in the center. So that way you keep track of how many things, and then when someone rolls a natural 20, they, like, take out a number. It's probably actually easier to do in person. But no, that's that's interesting. See, Heavyweight, this this is why I enjoy when there, there are people to talk to. Because, man, we just hit some, some super cool ideas. I don't know, but I don't know if it's more or less busted. Because, <laughs> like, I think that it does make... Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 the bla the 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 uh, Black Panther strategy. I don't know if it causes crits to be better or worse or like the same. But I think that I I I like the interactivity of it. Like you're still going to be doing like more than you normally would on average. But that also kind of it also kind of rewards you for getting a natural one. Which I like a lot. Because a lot of time that ones are just bad the whole way through. But like, it lessens the blow a little bit to like roll a natural one. It's like, well, I failed and there will be horrific consequences. But, the the pool of dice for if I inevitably roll a natural 20 has gotten better. How about that? That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. I'm gonna I'm have to talk to the gang and see what they think about it. Because that's... That's a that's an idea. <sighs> that's something else. So I I should say the original place that we got the idea for the crit rule from, because I don't want to claim that this is our idea, and and I like to give people credit. Uh, there's a a group. Even for for just a, a one shot combat encounter, that'd be a good test for it. Yeah, I'll have to see. I'll uh, like. I can, yeah, I can test that pretty easy. Um, there is a, a, a group of people that I... Uh, well, it's a duo of people that make Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition content uh, called... Uh, U.S. Like, Aviatus or something like that. Uh, and Snickle Socks. And they can be found if you search Retroverse 5th uh, Edition. 
Uh, they make a lot of content for Dungeons and Dragons that is very focused around like 80s and 90s aesthetic like disco like retro pop like keytars and and boom boxes and sorts of stuff like that they make really good stuff they have very very good art as well and it was in their uh, addition to the game that i first found the modified crit rule that we've been using um, and I, I try to shout them out whenever possible. I think the the best thing that we can do as a as a community for Dungeons and Dragons is continually tell people who like Dungeons and Dragons about other people who make really cool stuff for Dungeons and Dragons. So check them out. It's worth it. They're very cool. <laughs> uh, heavyweight. Do you use any? Do you use any? Uh, like homebrew but like not your own stuff like other people's stuff or is it just like your own homebrew stuff or do you homebrew or are you just straight to the rules potions like like potions from where I need to know <laughs> oh Oh, so if you spend an action to take a potion, you get the full... I like that a lot. If you use a bonus action, then you roll. I am a big fan of that. I, I, am, I am a big, big fan of that. That is sweet. I like that a lot. Because I, I kind of hate the idea that, like, you can only use magic items as actions. Like... That hurts me, because like technically you would ha you would have to use in action to drink a potion. So most people just homebrew it. That drinking a potion is a, a, a potion is a bonus action. But like adding the incentive of like hey, if you do it on your you know, on your turn and use your action for it, you get the full amount of healing. I'm a big fan of that. That's pretty sweet. I feel like I've seen that somewhere. But I, I, I can't remember where. And I, and I think I had that same reaction of like, oh, that's sweet. Homebrew a lot. Uh, it's despite being the Forever DM, I'm shockingly good at remembering mechanics. Well, that's that's the beautiful part about being a Forever DM, DM is you have the mechanics just slammed into your brain repeatedly because you watch people mess them up regularly. <laughs> um, I love homebrewing. Homebrewing is, is like, oh. Da-da-da-da. Who ran a one shot for us? Homebrew a lot. Oh! Oh! Gotcha. So you're not good at remembering mechanics. I see it. Well, never mind then. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a bit of a mechanics fiend. I, I love mechanics. I, 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 I'm a big fan. Uh, one of my favorite things in the game is figuring out ways to, uh, to manipulate things because of obscure rulings to work in my favor. I'm, I'm a, I would like to believe that I am the good, the, 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 like, the the anti hero of rules lawyers that's that's what i would like to believe uh i'm a bit of a min maxer i think that i'm less of a min maxer than i was um but you know I, one of the comments that uh, our dm uh, dj told me was uh, it was it was after the episode he was like aaron I only now realized it this episode, but it's almost like you've turned your spellcaster into a martial fighter because you have, like, skill combos where you'll chain together various moves and attacks to, like, give following moves and attacks, like, advantages and, and, and things that they normally couldn't do, which is crazy because I've been doing this 
I've been doing that same thing for like a year and a half, and you only now figured it out. Uh, but the current character that I'm playing is a war mage wizard. Uh, 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 I can never remember what it's called. Uh, it's not what what the wizard colleges are. Um, but he's a war wizard. That is basically my attempt to do Blade Dancer without choosing Blade Dancer. And so I have a lot of, uh, like, specific combo attacks that work with specific items and other spells that I've already cast. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun. He's meant to be an anti-mage, but we haven't fought any, like, true mages yet. So I'm, like, a worse version of, like, a martial character in a lot of ways. <laughs> But I'm, I'm thinking, assuming that we make it out of this TPK, that we're going to fight a mage soon. I'm very excited for that episode. But yeah, uh, one of the examples of what, like some of my favorite spells, if I could, if I could remember what the name of the spells are. Let me, let me see if I can pull it up here. I think my character sheets. Yeah, here we go. Look at me having things somewhat prepared. <laughs> Let's see. Is it sixth level? No, it's gotta be like. Gotta be. Gotta be like. What am I looking at here? Contingency. Oh my goodness, love contingency. Um, if you don't know what it is, that's that makes sense because. It is such a difficult spell. Um, heavyweight. On that topic, uh, another homebrew uh, is insta death only if someone hits you for double your max HP. Here's the thing: I'm a big fan of characters dying. I love high stakes. I'm a gambler at, in my in my heart and soul. And double max HP is just so hard. It's so hard to do. It's like way too easy to do when you're low level, and way too hard to do when you're high level. But at the same time, I don't know how to make it better without making so many other things worse. Like, for, like, a high stakes, like, you want to be able to, like, kill them, but not, like, kill them, kill them all the time, and it should be easier or it should it should remain pretty much the same as you go and i just don't know i just don't know i feel like there's a chance that just changing the amount of death saves a person has or needs to make is two is potentially better but i don't know anyway the spell contingency if you don't know what it does basically you cast a spell, and then you cast another spell, and you name a qualifier for that spell to take place. So, like, let's say the spell Water Breathing. You cast Contingency, you cast Water Breathing, uh, and the trigger is when I become fully submerged in water for more than two minutes. Um, and then if within the next ten days you become fully submerged in water... For more than two minutes, uh, the spell water breathing is automatically cast on you. It's sweet. It's really hard to pull off because, like, what are you, it has to be like a spell that only targets you. And there's not a whole lot of those that are like, that like, are good. Like they have to have a casting time of one at, uh, action that and that can target you. Uh, the spell like can't target another person. So it's like, the, the first one that comes to mind are like teleportation spells. Normally that would be fine. But how do you tell what the spell's going to do when it happens? Because you don't, you don't get to like choose where you go with the teleportation spell because the spell has already been cast. So it just happens. So you'd have to say, when I am hit by an attack that deals me more than 20 damage, I teleport 30 feet directly backwards. But, like, what if there's walls or a mountain there? Well, what happens? Where do you go? What are you doing? I love it. Because it's it's so hard to work around. 
those spells are like my bread and butter. Whew. I love finding... So, the nice part is, uh, it specifically just has a... Like, you describe the circumstance when you cast the, the two spells. Um, so, you can have a spell cast on you before a fight that triggers when you say a keyword. Let's take, for example, <laughs> also, it has to be, like, somewhat low level, which is rough. Like, that's tough. Um, spell of fifth level or lower. There's so few things that matter fifth level or lower that are in action and can target you that you would want to target you. The answer is, like, healing spells, I guess. Um, instead, what you could do, theoretically, is have a keyword that like when you say the keyword the contingency goes off and then so the spell that i've chosen for my main contingency is haste because the the worst part about haste is that it takes an action to cast and then you have your hasted action and nothing else but with contingency it doesn't take an action to do it and also an interesting thing about contingency since the spell has already been cast, it can't be counterspelled. So it just happens. It just goes into place. Ah, gotcha. Sorry. I was like, ooh, a first time chat. Um, uh, so, like, against another wizard who has counterspell, you basically have one free spell that you can cast on yourself that... Uh, like can't get counterspelled now they can dispel contingency before you have the chance to activate it or dispel the haste spell which is potentially worse because uh, then you have have a round where you can't do anything but like it sets up for some really sweet turns where you like land your contingency um my character also has uh he took metamagic adept so you can like he has the bonus action spell so you can like Activate Contingency, Meta Magic Adept, a bonus action spell, cast Booming Blade as your action, and then make a regular attack as your hasted action. Um, or, if you have another spell that, like, is pretty sweet but incredibly niche, called Freezing Sphere, um, which allows you to kind of wait on when the spell is cast... You can turn uh, the, the spell into a little, like, marble of ice that when you throw it on a later turn, that's when the spell happens. Now, the, the scary part is uh, it, it's a 60-foot radius sphere. It covers so much distance, and you can only throw it, like, 40 feet. If you have a sling, you can throw it up to 120 feet with disadvantage and that's hard to do and so a lot of times you end up uh like what abanthe's turn is when he hits uh the contingency is he'll already have the spell crown of stars cast and it will be uh oh also uh, thanks for watching. We we love our lurkers, um, so shout out to you. I'm, I'm a lurker in my heart, and we we don't see you, but we see you. You know. Um. <laughs> also, you're, you're gonna have to tell me. Uh, don't touch the bar. You're gonna have to tell me what you mean by that, because I'm I'm interested. I want to know. Um. But yeah, so it'll be like, activate the contingency, bonus action, cast a spell, action, cast booming blade, and then haste action, throw the sphere. So you basically end up casting, like, two ma three leveled spells and a cantrip in one turn. And so it, it leads to some sick combos. Uh, and it's, there's such a hard spell. It's, it's, it's similar to time stop. Time Stop sounds like such a powerful spell, but, like, most of the time, if you aren't fully statted for doing stuff in Time Stop, it's, like, 1d4 plus 1 turns, where you're just, like, well, 
I'll be honest, I'm not sure quite what to do. Because I can't touch anything, so I can heal myself, I guess. But I can't, like, affect another creature. It isn't like I can go and do a bunch of stuff in here. So you have to specifically have spells that you can cast in Time Stop that, like, work with each other and don't hurt anyone, at least until after Time Stop is over. For example, Delayed Blast Fireball. Delayed Blast Fireball is a fantastic one to cast in Time Stop. Probably the only time you should be casting Delayed Blast Fireball. When all my new players start in for one-shots, uh, the bar is staffed by one person. Drinks go to whomever, whomever, whomever uh, orders them. If someone touches it, wild magic happens in 1d4 lightning. Perfect. The best possible bar. Well, making it for no reason other than it's funny is an excellent reason to do something. Um, in fact, I would say that probably the best... Most of the best things that I've done have been because it was either funny and it was definitely unplanned like one of my players favorite npcs was just a ghost that had a different accent when they put on a different hat and that was the entire bit and they will still like bring it up to me to this day and that happened like 15 years ago or something like that um and i was just like well this ghost is boring i need this way a way to deliver the information that doesn't get my characters bored and so i was like hmm, what if they just had a bunch of hats um man dun and dragon what a, what a good game what a, what a game you know i i love when my players bring up something to me that's like hey man remember remember when we did that thing and i'm like honestly up until this moment no no i didn't but i'm glad that it's stuck with you <laughs> especially because half the time it's unplanned like it's just like i don't know throw this out there and they're like wow this speaks to me and you're like really oh okay i'm glad I'm glad that you'll remember this until you die <laughs> so how long have you been uh playing rpgs and, and dungeons dragons and stuff like that seeing as you made the bar like 20 years ago Probably quite a bit. That would have been, what, 4th edition for 3.5, maybe? I'm bad at this. How long is this? Yeah, no, no, it's earlier than... Is it earlier than 3.5? God, I'm so bad at the Dungeons and Dragons timeline. You were late to it. Like, like late to... Like, the start of Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> like, or like, late to, like, an edition. Early 20s. You relate to your early 20s? Wow, that's pretty hard to do. <laughs> AD&D 2nd Edition. Gotcha. What are your thoughts on the on like earlier editions of Dungeons & Dragons? Like, do you like the way that it's... Uh, started DMing in 3.5. So do you, do, like, do you like kind of the direction that Dungeons & Dragons is going? Or, like, do you kind of prefer... Like, would you kind of want it to return to, like, earlier editions? Because, I, like, I know, like, the people that I first started playing with were people who started in, like, first, second edition. And it was about 50-50 with them, where half of them were like, I don't know, I really like the direction that the game's going. I like that it's become a little bit more open for players, a bit easier to manage, less books, like, more storytelling, less numbers. And then the other the other half are like, no, I liked it when it was like money, power, and influence. And that was like what you were doing. And like that was the whole thing about it. And and so I, I find it always interesting to ask. Because I, I don't think that there's... I don't think that it's... There's anything necessarily wrong about either direction to go, right? Like... Love to play Pathfinder 2nd uh, Edition. I've never played Pathfinder. Um, it's something that I've considered, but, like, it's also, like, not in the in the wallet capacity. Um, I, like, I already have so many books invested into Dungeons & Dragons to, like, go into a new RPG that I have to find, like, multiple books for and, like, kind of relearn is tough. 
compare the two as one is stretches the other's chest. Yeah, that's that's a very good from what I've heard, that's a very good explanation. Um So I am I'm a bit of I love RPGs that are like not as well known as Dungeons and Dragons. I like like single book RPGs and stuff like that. Um with like few expansions and stuff and and stuff. I'm I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm a collector, but I have a collection that is is slightly small of them. The trouble is finding people to play them, because if you say, "Hey, do you want to try Dungeons and Dragons?" People at least know what you're talking about. But if you're like, "Hey, do you want to play Forbidden Lands?" Then people look at you like you're a lunatic. Um. I recently obtained one. Savage. Oh my goodness. Do I own Savage Worlds? I I don't think I do. But I wait. Do I? I don't. God, I don't think I own Savage Worlds. That's. I think that's one of the ones that I like. I like want to pick up so bad. Um, recently, the there's a a producer of RPG books uh, called Free League Publishing. I love Free League Publishing. Um, and they released uh, Dragon's Bane recently. It's been the, like, Scandinavian number one RPG for, like, 40 years. And this is the first time that they've, like, brought it into an English printing. I want to play it so bad. It, it's a D20 system, which is hard to find. Um, especially in, like, not as talked about kind of areas a lot of them are like d6 based and stuff like that which are fine but i really like the like d20 based systems but it's different than Dungeons the dragons because one the dm almost never rolls so like instead of the dm rolling to hit players the players roll to dodge like and if they fail the dodge then they get hit and the way that rolling works is you'll have stats from 0 to 20, and a success is a number rolled that is below your stat. So, like, if you have a 14 in strength and you want to, to like, climb a wall, 14 and below is what you succeed in. Super interesting. Like, and I, I also feel like it would be pretty easy to pick up for people who are used to playing Dungeons the Dragons... Because it's kind of the same thing, just kind of flipped. Instead of big numbers, you want small numbers. Um, I, I, and, oh man, it looks so sweet. I, let me actually, I would love to show this off. Because uh, it's, it's so cool. Forgive the Magic the Gathering mess behind me. I've been working on things. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, see, here's the thing. You know that it isn't just that they roll that ones. It's that they roll bad. <laughs> so they're going to be landing more crits than you've ever seen. Um, but, so I, I kickstarted the uh, Dragon's Bane Kickstarter. And so one of my favorite things about Free League Publishing is that they have these cloth maps that are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this the right side up. Like beautiful cloth maps. They're like artsy and cool. I've got like three of them and they're awesome. They're like a uh, microfiber, like sturdy fabric. Really sweet. But the actual game got a DM screen here. It's upside down. Whoop. DM screen. The actual game is just in one box. And and that's one of the things that is one of my biggest frustrations about Dungeons Dragons is that there's so much bulk to like playing the game. Like you need three books on top of anything else that you have. So on and so forth. Pain in the neck. Nice dice. Um... So one of the things about it that is interesting is instead of rolling dice to determine initiatives, you draw cards. So you have a number of cards equal to the amount of players, lowest number goes first, so on and so forth. They also have a, a 
card, a, a, a deck of cards for loot, which is really interesting. It's a fun way to determine things if you choose to use it. Uh, they also have included in the box tokens that that like like monster cutouts, like cardboard things instead of uh, minis. And then the whole book. My my one disappointment is that the books aren't hardcover. I'm a sucker for hardcover books, and these aren't aren't those. But you have a, a rules of a, a rules book for Dragon Bane, and then an entire book of just adventures. Also, it can be played solo. How sweet is that? That's awesome. They, it, and it includes a solo, like, a solo encounter. Like, yes, please. It's awesome. Uh, if so, and if you notice on the cover of the Dragon's Bane rules book, that's a that's a mallard. You can play as duck people. Yeah, I wanna I wanna play as gosh dang. Darkwing Duck, put me in, coach. Um, yeah, and so one of the best part about Free League Publishing, uh, they also make a, a game called Vison, which I have played a lot of. Uh, the artwork is gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. Uh, very, like, whimsically terrifying in a lot of ways. Um, very long, very angular very stylized art um so if you're looking for cool new rpgs uh check out free league publishing because I, I know that they're currently they've won a lot of awards for a lot of rpgs that they they've done i know that they're currently releasing a new expansion or maybe they're getting an award for an expansion to their lord of the rings rpg that they have um, they, they're they also the ones who release uh, who print Tales from the Loop if you've ever heard of that I know that that won a couple of awards um, but yeah I love, love new RPGs um, and I'm very excited about this one as I said I also got Forbidden Lands which is uh, 3D6 and stuff um, oh not a problem heavyweight I, I'm actually probably going to end the stream too, because it's been far longer. It's been a blast having you. Thanks for thanks for hanging out and talking. Um, 7 p.m. CST on Monday nights, uh, and and I'll see you around hopefully. Uh, feel free to hit us up and, and talk some more. I'll have to stop by your stream sometime. Uh, do you also play like Dungeons Dragons and stuff? You're leaving. Go go be free. Do the things. <laughs> you have a good rest of your day. Mondays and Tuesdays. I'll check it out on Tuesday sometime. I'll keep a keep an eye out. Um, but as I was saying, I'm probably gonna end the stream because it's been we we hit past the 45 minute mark. That's what we're looking for. Hit like an hour and almost hour and a half. Um, thank you to everyone who stopped by. Uh, thank you to uh, the raid heavyweight RPG and those of you who came along. Uh, if you want to support us, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, we have a Patreon, we have a Ko-Fi, and we have a Streamlabs donation. Honestly, just showing up is probably the best way that you can support us. Uh, it's free. It's pretty sweet. Uh, bring your friends. You have those. You play Dungeons and the Dragons, so you have to know some people. It's hard to play Dungeons and the Dragons alone. Um, we have uh, social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. We have a website. We have a merch store. We have a Discord. The Discord's pretty sweet. Hop in the Discord. Uh, and things will hopefully be picking up uh, the farther we get along. And uh, once we start Campaign 2, I think things will, will really get the ball rolling then. Uh, so thank, thanks everyone for stopping by. I've had an absolute blast. Uh, the only thing that I have left to say to everyone is the same thing that I say after every stream. Good luck and Godspeed, everyone. We will see you next time, Dungeoneers. Goodbye. Goodbye.